Hi, I'm Sherry, and this is Gardening in the North. A week ago, I had pulled a ton of tomatoes off of my plants and placed them into my dining room, on the dining room table, covered them with newspaper in the hopes that they would ripen. A lot of them have ripened, but a lot of them have not. So my plan today is to use all of the green tomatoes that I have in my dining room to make salsa verde before the fruit flies come. The first thing I'm gonna do with these tomatoes is I'm gonna remove them from the vines. When I brought them in a week ago, I actually just cut the vines off and brought them in like that, laid them out on my dining room table and waited for them to ripen. And a lot of them did ripen. Now, the reason I leave mine on the vine is because I think that they ripen up a little quicker and usually more of them will ripen up. So I'm gonna remove them from these vines. I'm gonna slice them in half. I'm going to lay them down on a cookie sheet that I've covered in parchment paper, along with um, some onions and some jalapeno peppers. And I'm gonna roast them in the oven at about 400 for about an hour, hour and 20 until I see that they're starting to caramelize and starting to get that char look to them because I really do like that char flavor that uh, roasting your vegetables prior to making salsa gives them. Before I cut these tomatoes up and put them in the oven, I just wanted to talk a little about journaling and to kind of ask whether or not you journal the amount of harvest you get from your garden. So I, har I journal everything from my garden. And the reason that I do that is to determine whether or not I need to plant more or less of that variety. And the same thing goes for green tomatoes. I've been journaling all of my ripe tomatoes and I need to do the same for the green tomatoes because the green tomatoes are gonna be providing me jars of salsa and we need to know if that's something that we really want to do again next year. So this measuring cup that I have here is four cups. So as I'm pulling my tomatoes off of the vines, I'll be putting them in here first. I'll be marking down how many cups I have in this jar or in this measuring cup as I go before cutting them up. It's a really good tool to use to know whether or not um, you're actually planting too much in your garden. Because if you're planting too much in your garden and you can't process it and you can't give it away, nobody else that your friends and family, you know, maybe they're already gardeners and you know, you don't want it to go to waste. There's no point in using gardening space if you're not going to utilize what you pull out of it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the first tray into the oven. It is filled with green tomatoes of all varieties that I grew this year, along with onions. And I'm just gonna keep putting trays into the oven, um, a mixture of tomatoes, onions, peppers. I like to do um, all of my ingredients kind of mixed together so that when they caramelize in the oven, all the flavors mix together. So I'm gonna get this in the oven and when all of the vegetables have been roasted, I'll bring you back. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Didn't have enough time last night to cut everything up, roast it, um, decided to spend some time with the family and have a bonfire. But I got up this morning around 5.30 and I've been slicing and dicing since about then. Um, so it's probably been about two and a half hours now. And I just wanted to show you what some of the tomatoes look like when I roasted them. So one of the things that I decided to do instead of roasting all of the tomatoes is I actually diced up a bunch of them and just threw them right into my roaster. And the reason I did that is when you roast them in the oven, you do lose a lot of the juice that those tomatoes naturally have. 
And rather than adding other liquid to my salsa, I really did want the juice to be a lot of the natural tomato juice. So I have added half of the tomatoes, the green tomatoes to the roaster that were fresh green tomatoes. And I'm gonna let it simmer probably for about three or four hours, mixed in with all of the roasted tomatoes and onions and peppers and all of the spices that I've added, the lime juice, and I also added a little bit of apple cider vinegar, but I will put the exact recipe down below. I ended up using all of the tomatoes that were in this bowl and ended up being 35 pounds of tomatoes. So let me show you what the roaster now looks like with all of the roasted and fresh tomatoes mixed in. So you can see the difference between the nice bright green fresh tomatoes and the tomatoes that were roasted in the oven. And you can also see how full this roaster is. So I am going to go get ready and head to the store, see if I can find some more jars because I didn't anticipate having this much salsa. Uh, if I can't find any, then I will be heading to my parents' house, my sister's house and beg, borrowing and stealing what I can. I'll bring you back when it's time to blend. So everything is cooked in the roaster and I'm now gonna use my immersion blender and I'm going to blend it up so it's a chunky consistency. You don't wanna puree it because it's not soup, it's salsa. So I'm gonna start doing that. First thing I wanna mention though is that my hands have been on fire since last night when I cut up all of the jalapenos. So my tip to you is remember to wear the gloves. A couple times last night I touched my eye, it took me probably about 10-15 minutes to be able to then open up my eye because it was burning so bad. Um, my hands actually feel like I've put them on the stove burner and they actually feel like I have some kind of physical burn to them. Um, so I would just want to... Just gonna, so I just want to caution you to please wear gloves. So while I'm here, I just also want to show you that I am doing a second sterilization to my jars. So I always throw my jars into the dishwasher as we empty them. And then I store them face down so that dust and stuff can't fall into them. I rinse them out before using them and then I pre-sterilize them before actually filling them with the, um, the food that I've processed. And the reason I do that is I want to ensure that there is absolutely no chance of bacteria in my jars. So I will pull these out after I have blended up the salsa, add the salsa into the jars, add them back into the pot and have them uh, boil for about 15 minutes. At the 15 minute mark, I remove the lid and then I let them sit there for five minutes and then pull them out and we'll have the popping magic. I'm going to start blending this masterpiece up. I wanna make sure that I blend up all of the jalapenos. The last thing you want in your salsa is getting a mouthful of just jalapenos. I'm just going to keep going through it, kind of systematically going through, making sure that I don't see any of the tomatoes. I'm going to do a taste test. I want to make sure that the flavor is exactly what our family enjoys before I place this into the jars. That way I can add whatever I think still needs to be added um, to make it what our family likes. So I'm just gonna do a bit of a taste test here. Now, keeping in mind that it is warm salsa right now, and normally what I would do is, if I think that it's a good consistency and it's a good flavor, 
Sometimes I will take a little bit, put it into a small bowl and put it in the freezer so that we can then try it when it's cold because sometimes when you taste something that's warm that you normally eat when it's cold, there is a bit of a difference in the taste. Mmm. -hmm. I really like it. I just, I'm thinking it needs a little bit more salt, but I just want to be sure. <laughs> It's not as hot as I envisioned it to be. After I put 10 jalapenos in this, I thought that it would be a little bit spicier. And given that my hands are still on fire, I thought that maybe those jalapenos that I added in were stronger than the ones I used in my zucchini tomato salsa. But I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna add a little bit of hot pepper flakes to it just to give it a little bit more of a kick and then I'm gonna start canning it. I added a whole bunch of these crushed red chili peppers and this was almost basically full. So I've added a lot in there. We really do like a spicy salsa. So I think that it has a pretty good kick to it right now. But once I've canned it and then it sits on the shelf and as we use it, I think that it'll only intensify the taste. So couple things I wanted to talk about uh, before we get started are the tools that you need. You want to make sure that you have a funnel. You need the funnel in order to get the salsa into the jars. You also want to make sure that you have tongs like this. This is how I took the jars out of the hot water bath after, after I had sterilized them without getting my hands um, burned. You also need these. This is what you're actually going to put the jars in and out with. You need your wand. Your wand is going to help you pick up your lids once you've put the boiling water into your bowl. Now, there are two ways that people do this. One, they actually just take the lids and put them right onto their jars. The other way is that you can put hot boiling water into your bowl, warm up the lids prior to using them, and then add them onto your jars. I always put the hot water into the bowl and the reason I do that is I want to make sure that the wax actually warms up and then gets a really good seal. Now the other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a paper towel so that after you have filled your jar and you remove the funnel, you want to wet it a little bit with some of that hot water and you want to wipe the rim before you put your lid on. Very important that you do that because if you don't do that and there is some salsa that is on there and you didn't see it, then you're not gonna get that magical pop. And, and if you do, it could be a false pop, meaning that a month down the road, you might start to get bacteria in your jars and you don't want that. Okay, so let's get started. I'm actually going to take some of this hot water right out of my pot. I've removed some of the water that was in this pot because I was actually sterilizing the jars with nothing in them. So I had to have extra water in the pot. Now, when I'm done filling my jars, I'm gonna place them back into the pot and I'm gonna make sure that they are covered by the hot water by at least an inch. You wanna make sure that they're covered. So if I need to add more hot water afterwards, I'll just take it from this pot because I'm sterilizing jars in there as well. Um, the other thing that I wanna mention is that, you know, even though you're gonna hot water bath them for 15 minutes, that 15 minutes does not start until this water is boiling with all your jars in it. So even though I'm putting a jar in, and I have it on high and it's starting to boil, the 15 minutes doesn't start until all your jars are in there. Okay, so let's get started. I'm actually just going to put a little bit more in my bowl here. Okay. Make sure this is on so it starts. And so you can see by the way I'm putting it in that if I didn't have this funnel, it would be a horrendous mess. Or you would be really careful about it and 
it would take you extra long. So the other thing that I want to point out is these grooves that are on the jar that you're actually going to spin your rings onto. The top ring there is a quarter inch from the top. And so what that means is that's where you're going to go to. You're not going to go above that or too much below it. You really want to keep with that top ring. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I'm there. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more. So, okay. So I'm just going to take a bit of hot water. I'm actually going to go around it. I'm going to take my lid. I'm just going to sit it right on top. Put my lid on. Again, you're not tightening it so that you're like really struggling to tighten it. You just want to tighten it so it stops. Okay. And then as soon as you're done one, you're just going to put that one right in. Now you can see by looking in my pot here that it's probably about an inch and a half below the top of that one. But as I load them in, it sh the water will rise up and I may not need to add any more hot water back in. Hey guys, so I'm all done. It's been a long day, a long day of canning and dicing up uh, ripened tomatoes and just sorting out all the harvest that I've been bringing in every day. From the green salsa, so the salsa verde, I got 19 pints and two quarts. So I'm set for the year. Thanks for spending time with me.